Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turtle Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of sports, TV, pop culture, f- film, everything really depending on the guests we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On Twitter, you know me as Petey Beats. And we are speaking to an MMA fighter who is in the featherweight division in the UFC coming off a big win at UFC 246. We're with Sadiq Youssef. Sadiq, welcome to Pop Turtle. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. No problem. I mean, a uh, big win against Andre Philly um, at uh, UFC 246. I mean, first question, how are you feeling, man? Uh, so uh, so far, so good. You know, no, um, nothing feels broken, you know, a little bit of bumps and bruises, but those are temporary, you know, those is going to fade away. And I'm just glad I came out with a W. Absolutely. And you know what? It was about, I would say about like, you know, you were kind of pr- preparing for this fight, like, properly for about three weeks you know was it everything kind of you hoped was going to happen in the outcome of this fight uh yeah yeah basically the fight kind of went the way i thought it would i i, w- I was hoping to get a finish you know because um the, the better to finish the better the bonuses you get so that's mm-hmm. the only thing that i wish would have been different but outside of that you know i can't really complain there's a solid win over a solid guy in the division so you know i'm blessed it was a big fight in the pre- in the prelims, and you're 26 years old. I mean, do you think this is kind of like one of those big moments in your career where it's kind of like the you know breakthrough career of Sadiq Youssef? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, I I feel like um th- this isn't necessarily the breakthrough moment of my career, but it's the moment of career that lets people know where I belong in the in the division and in the in the UFC organization you know um the my la- my recent opponent is someone that's been in the in the organization for a long time and he's kept a steady a steady frame like a steady position in the division you know so the fact that I'm able to get past him just shows that okay I belong on this side of the bracket as opposed to the other side Absolutely. Yeah, I mentioned you're 26 years old. At what age did you kind of decide that MMA was something that you really, really wanted to do, Sadiq? Uh, since, since I was a kid. I've been telling people I was going to be in the UFC since, since like, middle school. I, I've been telling people I was going to be in the UFC since I was a little kid. I just didn't know the direction of how to get there, but I've always – this has been my dream since I was little. And have you ever had any interactions with some of those childhood friends that kind of remember those conversations you had with yeah, them? And they're yeah, like, wow, yeah, yeah. is this real life? Uh, yeah, a few of them. You know, I remember um, one of them messaged me, and he was like, "Man, I remember when he, when he said he was gonna do this," and I said, "It was never gonna happen." And look at you now, you're really doing it. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. Everyone that watches your fights knows that you know you're a, like they kind of see you as that that striker. You're very quick. You're a striker, but you know. Another thing, too, that you said in other interviews as well is your jiu-jitsu background. That's something that you kind of wanted to show in this fight as well. So you're not just kind of limited to just a striker. You also have that jiu-jitsu background. Is that fair to say you made that case to kind of show the, jiu- the jiu-jitsu background in the fight, Sadiq? Yeah, yeah. And it, but believe it, it's not really something that I wanted to show, but it's something that I knew that, like, once the day comes for me to have to show it, that I knew it was going to catch a lot of people by surprise. And I think it is one of the things that definitely um, threw Andre off because I did hear him say that this was going to be the most dominant win of his career and it was going to be the most impressive he's looked. So I guess that I was thinking that meant he was planning on just taking me down and controlling me there. But um, I he think he. Most people, just because they haven't seen it, you know, it's not really that they underestimate my grappling. It's just because they don't know. But if you do enough research, you'll find out that I'm actually from a jiu-jitsu gym. Most of the um, athletes in our gym are known for being world-class grapplers, not MMA fighters. Absolutely. And, you know, we all know that, you know, professional athletes in general, we're talking about MMA fighters right now. I mean, get, going to the gym, maintaining that schedule, getting in there, hustling and grinding is really, really important. Two-part question for you, Sadiq. Part one, I mean, when did you kind of decide that, you know, um, you know, you have your routines at the gym, but there might have been a situation where to get where you want to go, maybe you'd want, you needed to kind of step it up train harder, work on other things, when did that kind of happen? And two, what is some advice that you have for some people that have a hard time sticking to the, like the training, you know what I mean? That, that like, it's cause it's a grind and it's hard sometimes, but you yeah. have to stick with it. Yeah, I got you. The, um, I, I believe it. I have a lot of people that can vouch for me 
that I've I've been the same guy that I've been from day one. You know, I've always been the the first guy in and the last guy out of the gym. That's the that's the biggest thing that I can credit my success to is just being consistent. There's a lot of times in life where like family and friends would try to like take you away from the gym, make you miss like certain practices. But I've always prioritized going to practice over everything else. I skipped out a lot of fun. I skipped out a lot of like friend times to make sure I stay consistent with my schedule. And it got me this far, so I can't complain. And as far as your other question, this is one of those things where like it's always been in me. There's not something that somebody is going to tell you that's going to that's going to that's going to spark some type of magic formula the number one drive got to come from within yourself everybody else around you your coaches your friends and your family they're just they're they're like spices in the in the food you have to be the main dish you know so if you're looking for somebody like a a, another athlete or a coach to give you a motivation you're uh, it's gonna sound harsh but you're you're in the wrong sport you know Mm -hmm. because that's in the world class level everybody's just as talented as you are, except they're all hard workers, you know, and some of them might not even have your talent, but they're going to work their ass off until they get there. Like, I don't think I've, I've been the talent, the most talented guy in my gym, but I, I will wager my consistency against everybody else's, you know, it's like a lot of people in the UFC might have been training a long time, a lot longer than I have. But if you count our mat time, which is our amount of time that we actually have in the gym, mine's is going to be equal, if not more. So most of my, most of my peers. So, I wish I could tell. I wish that I could BS you and give you like um the uh, easy answer to tell the kids like oh okay just show up and work hard and blah blah blah. But that's something that people your coach isn't gonna be able to teach you. That's only gonna come from within yourself. Your coaches are gonna be there to teach you techniques and get you through hard times. But the work ethic gotta come from you. Absolutely. No, I just mentioned it because, you know, I I interview a lot of different athletes from different sports on it, and they all, like, and every sport you watch, you know, when you hear about someone who, you know, gets cut from a hockey team or doesn't make a main card or something, it, you know, it has to do with their, their kind of, like, if they're in shape or not, you know what I mean? Because some people, you know, can't, like, it happens, like, they, they can't kind of stay to, like, a proper workout plan. Exactly, exactly. It's consistency, man. I think that I've been, that's kind of been one of the big words for me the last the last couple of months, you know, because sometimes I sit back too and try to reflect on why I'm in a certain position and why other people aren't, you know, and that's the main thing I, could, I credit it to is just, is just being consistent because everybody can work hard and burst in short bursts, you know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm a hard worker for three months and then that's it. Then they, they start showing up late to practice or they miss practices, you know, so it's, it's, it's little things like that. You just got to be consistent and, and especially in this crazy sport that we do MMA is like there's so many ways for things to go wrong you know so yeah. like there's so many different ways to finish a fight there's so many freak you get flying eat in 16 seconds or you or you get up kicked you know so the the more time you spend at the gym trying to fix mistakes the better it is for you because you're never going to fix everything that's what I love about this sport there's so many things to work on you're never going to be 100% everywhere like you're always going to have like little short they're gonna be places where you're gonna fall short and if your opponent can find that it's gonna be a bad night for you so you just gotta be consistent man no I've, absolutely um getting back to you know the the oh, fight man. that just happened at ufc 246 i mean it you know um obviously you know your fight was in the prelims but a lot of people say that it was one of the best fights in the prelims um the main card obviously you know so you're training for this fight and it's and you know you find out eventually that, you know, it's McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone as the main thing. That's a huge fight. That's a big fight. It's it's McGregor's return. You're on social media a lot. You like MMA fighters, UFC fighters, you're all on social media. But how did you how do you kind of block out all that noise, McGregor, 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 and just focus on your fight? Because I feel like that would be the hardest thing, man. <laughs> I think I think um the fans and the viewers perspective is a little bit skewed from what the fighters are. Believe it or not, when you're back there with the rest of the fighters, everybody's focused on themselves because you're about to go fight another man or another woman in your underwear. So you're, they're not <laughs> taking it. You're not taking the time to think about um how well Conor McGregor's day is going. You know, and, and <laughs> at least at least for me, or I can't speak for everybody else on the card, but for me. And um, I'm sure his opponent, for sure, you're kind of happy that he's on there, you know, because he brings a certain amount of eyes to the sport. And if you're fighting on the same part as him, 
those eyes are going to fall on you, whether it's on purpose or by accident. When I first found out that I was going to be fighting on, um, on on this card i was i was super happy man i thought it was a blessing i actually thought i was going to be fighting on the pay-per-view portion but then they told us they was moving us to the espn part and i think that's because of the ufc's um marketing team they figured um we would get more eyes on us because it's it's a espn portion and they also need an exciting fight on the free portion of the card so it will entice people into buying the pay-per-view so they they needed a fighter they needed a fight like me and andre so this is like I said, it's it's super cool, man. And most most fighters aren't they're not really thinking about who's headlining the card outside of the fact that it's just going to get more eyes on them. Once you realize like, OK, it's this guy versus this guy. We're going to have this many eyes on us. That's kind of where it ends. You're not going to be in, the, in your own locker room before you fight thinking about, man, I hope Connor beats his guy. You know, <laughs> you're thinking of, you're thinking about trying to survive your fight. But it's so funny, too, because there's so many storylines of every fight and specifically storylines of your fight. I mean, this was, of course, a big win and a big victory for Sadiq Youssef, but this was also a big victory for Nigeria as well, right? Yes, definitely. I've been repping my country from day one, you know, from from the moment I started fighting, I've been waving that flag because it means a lot to me just to represent my country in a positive light. There's a lot of negative stigma and like some negative stereotypes that comes with Nigerians and the more positivity I could bring up on the country, the better that is for me because it's not just going to be motivational for my people, it'll be motivational for the kids that are watching too, you know? Like, I always say MMA is one of those sports that you don't need to have a certain body type to be able to do, and you don't need to come from money, and it doesn't matter if you come from being poor. As long as you put in the work, and your work ethic can get you really, really far in this sport, and you don't need to be um, six foot four, because right? other sports have, like, a barrier entry where you have to have a certain type of body for you to be even able to participate, or to be good. But mixed martial arts is based off weight classes. As long as you got limbs and you're able to, you don't have to have limbs, because it's Nick Newell that doesn't have an arm. So as long as, as long as you're willing to put the work in and you're willing to find your style and perfect it, you could be great. It's it's funny because I always kind of want to ask this question. I mean, your answer might be a bit different because, you know, you're 26 and, you know, it's 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 just starting for you and you're doing a lot of big things in UFC. But when I had last summer Derek Brunson on my podcast, you know, he's been fighting for quite some time, right? So he was kind of talking about it. But I find it interesting. You see, you know, like, you got to mention it, you know, it's different, but, like, UFC and a lot of the UFC fighters going, like, MMA fighters going to professional wrestling, the WWE and those those events, too, you know? Um, I just wanted to know, man, like, what do you think about that? Not not maybe, like, oh, would you ever go, you know, become a professional wrestler after your UFC career? More like, what do you think of that kind of landscape of them kind of going, like, jumping over? I, I, I honestly, I think it's cool, man. Like, with me, um. I'm one of those people, man. I, I just want people to be happy, man. You because I was I was doing an interview earlier today, and they were saying what um what entices you the most about um being in the UFC is it like the fame or money or blah blah. blah. I and I my answer is that it's opportunities. You know, a lot of these fighters like outside of fighting, some of, a lot of us still have dreams and hopes of accomplishing other things, and we still have things that we're in love with. A lot of these guys are going to the WWE. A lot of them grew up watching the WWE and a lot of them, the reason why they're able to make that transition is because they were kind of playing that character in, in the UFC. And it's hard to play a character when you're facing real life consequences and you're, you're doing a real fight, you know, but the WWE is their actual passion is their dream. A fighting is an opportunity that opens up that door and could get you into the WWE. If that's what you want to do, you should 100% take it. You know, somebody else might want to get into acting. If the, if the UFC is what opens up that door, go ahead and take it. You want to get into dancing, you want to get into a ballet, anything like that. So, uh, you, I can't, I can't hate on anyone that wants to take that path. You know, and especially there are guys like Kobe Covington and and all those guys are like the big trash talkers and the ones that they're obviously they're letting you know that persona is fake, but they're they're doing a lot of talking just to get eyes on the on the sport. But he's expressed that he wants to do WWE when yeah. he finishes, you know. So this is like something that he's using for practice. And at the end of the day, the us fighters, we know what's going on, you know. So you can't hit you can't hit on the man. And as as long as he's not hurting anybody, as as long as he's um he's ending it where the fight ends I, you you do you you know if that's the door that you want to open with you, with the ufc go ahead and open that door absolutely we're going to wrap up very quickly what is, what's next for sadiq yusuf 
Uh, right now, it's just um, relaxing and letting my injuries heal and waiting for my coaches to announce um, what my next fight is. You know, uh, people think I, I play around when I say I, I just I just kind of show up. But that's really how my career has been because I train consistently. I don't have camps. I do the same thing all year round. And then one night I just get calls from my coaches like, hey, we're fighting this guy on this date. And I, I, I show up. No, Absolutely. Well, seriously, Steve, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative. I know you're really, really busy with a lot of interviews, so it really, I really, it really means a lot that you took the time to come and talk to me on my show, man. Thank you so much. No, no problem, man. It's my pleasure. I'll be back anytime. No, absolutely. Where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Everything from YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, Facebook, it's all Super Sadiq. If you look up Super Sadiq, I'll be the first person to show up. That's one of the benefits of having a very unique thing. Oh, absolutely, man. Well, no, seriously, thank you so much. Again, congratulations. Rest up, and we're all excited for the next fight, man. Thank you. Have a nice one, champ. You too, man. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, YouTube.com slash Pop Turnative for previous episodes. And until next time, this is Sadiq Youssef and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.